author and columnist Mark Stein before we get into some of the news of the day. Mark, are you on the tank top bandwagon? Where do you come down on this? Uh, the last guy to look good in a tank top was uh, Donny Osmond singing, and they called it Puppy Love in 1973. Uh, and, and that's uh, Donny Osmond and Mike Huckabee. They can wear the tank tops. Yeah. I'll pass. Well, Mike Huckabee agreed with you. He said, absolutely yeah. not. That's yeah. a no-go. So Mark's on board with that. I, I hear him. Well, someone, something else you might not be on board with is uh, we got to get your commentary on Maxine Waters. She was on uh, your favorite program, The View, explaining why Democrats uh, are switching parties and and to vote for Trump, that they're actually in denial and he's making false promises to them. Listen. He has made these people believe that he's going to bring back the coal industry. It is not going to happen. They stick with him not because they think he is going to change government as such. I think they stick with him because he has made them believe that somebody else is responsible for their problems. Yeah. For these small towns and these areas where the stores have closed down, the jobs have left, it is those people over there, I'm going to build a wall, I'm going to keep those people out. They're the cause of your problem. They're getting something for nothing. It's not you, and they believe well, I that. Think I hmm. So it's denial. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great message from Maxine Waters and the Democrats. It's your fault, losers. I don't think that's true. I have towns like that all around me. I'm speaking to you from northern New Hampshire, uh, where people whose uh, grandparents worked on farms and whose parents worked in mills and were able to lead a prosperous life raising their children uh, now have kids where the daughter does a minimum wage service job and the son is on heroin. And uh, it's simply not good enough to say, uh, that's just your fault. Uh, whereas, by contrast, Maxine Waters has had a life in uh, so-called, quote, public service, to go full Dr. Evil on the scare quotes, public service, and she's a multimillionaire. I don't know how that happened, but there are millions and millions of people for whom that arrangement, where if you're in a privileged government profession like Maxine Waters, you get rich, mm. Uh, and if you're just trying to do your job like people did for uh, the last couple of centuries in America, you can no longer support yourself. That system doesn't work for millions and millions of Americans. Yeah. But, Mark, I want to get your take on this story. I think it's my favorite story of the, of the morning, in addition to the tank top story. But this one out of Virginia. There's a Republican there. His name is Bob. And he's suing the Virginia GOP. And he wants his money back. He donated money during the election. He... The reason he donated is because they promised that they would repeal and replace Obamacare. Now he's suing them, accusing the party of fraud and <laughs> racketeering. He wants his money back. First of all, on the surface, what do you make of this story? Well, I, I think that's uh, brilliant. And the danger for the Republican Party is that there are millions and millions uh, of people across the country who join him and mm -hmm. make it the all-time greatest class action suit awesome. that's ever been seen on the planet. Uh, and uh, you can sign me up for that one, too. Uh, because let's, let's, having just put down uh, Maxine Waters, I will say this about the Democrats. Whatever you feel, they get into power and they deliver. Boom, right from the first day, they're doing it. Governmentalized health care, gay marriage, open borders, transgendered military, climate change, they deliver uh, for key segments of their uh, key niche demographics of their base. Uh, whereby uh, the Republicans uh, basically uh, ease up and they're where they, uh, to the point where they'll do what the Democrats do two, three, four years later. And that's yeah. not enough. If the Republicans are just a mechanism for uh, uh, taking money from the rubes and saps and, and sluicing it to the consultant industrial complex, the party works fine. But what we've seen these last six months is that these slick parliamentarians like Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell simply cannot deliver... A Oh, we, oh we might have lost him. He's there and see right. behind him. He's I wonder in, if the Republican in... Party clipped his line there. They're happy <laughs> he's to hear in it. New Hampshire. Uh, We're going to try to get Mark back here in a second. I wanted to ask him about this because we went from tank tops to then suing the Republican Party to this cuddling story that we were talking about. Of course, it's increasingly unreasonable to expect any kind of rational restraint in rhetoric on the question of Russia. All bets are off when that topic comes up. Today, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California exceeded herself yet again, claiming that Vladimir Putin took time off from governing Russia to come up with Donald Trump's campaign rhetoric. Watch this. 
I think that when you saw him absolutely uh, calling Hillary crooked, uh, the uh, lock her up, lock her up, all of that was developed. I think that was developed strategically uh, with people from the Kremlin, uh, with Putin, and I think it's more than bank records. Richard Goodstein advised Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign in both 2008 and 2016. He joins us tonight. Uh, Richard, thanks a lot for coming on. Glad to be back. Sure. So I think it's fair to have you <laughs> comment on Maxine Waters because she's not just what she was a year ago, this, this fringe figure out in California, but she's one of the most popular members of the Democratic Party, and she's articulating things that are common currency among the net roots, as you know, on the Democratic side. How can a member of Congress stand up and say she believes, with no evidence whatsoever, that a foreign government wrote a presidential campaign's talking points and get away with it. And nobody says, whoa, settle down, Maxine Waters. You know yeah. that's true. Stop that. It's irresponsible. Why does nobody say that? You know, when you were talking about McCarthyism earlier, I thought you were doing kind of a pun about the Kevin McCarthy saying that Putin was paying both Trump and Dana Rohrabacher. And then when people laughed, he said, this is no joke. Uh, honestly, I thought that's where you were going. As to, as to Maxine Waters, no, it's, it's not have where I was going. And by the way, it's not my job to defend what, what McCarthy says or any Republican leader, anybody. I'm just saying as an American, this is unfair. People's lives are being hurt. Yeah. You know and what? In some cases, destroyed on the basis of innuendo, not I, facts. And that's I, wrong. It's always I, wrong. I totally agree. We should stick to facts. Maxine Waters is going to have to defend herself. But the facts themselves, the undisputed facts, are so incriminating about the possibility of collusion. I don't think you need Maxine Waters dreaming things up between all the contacts between Manafort, Roger Stone, Mike Flynn, Carter Page, Trump's glowing comments about Putin, the fact that 17 intelligence agencies said that, they, that um, indeed the Russians did get behind WikiLeaks to help Trump and hurt Hillary. And but are I you think listening to yourself? Wait, I think the you crazy just said they're thing. incriminating as to the possibility. You can't. You can't incriminate someone as to the possibility. Either it's incriminating or not. Well, no, 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 well, no. There's no, no evidence no, it, that that actually happened. And no. until there is, why suggest otherwise? Well, I would say that the, the piece de resistance is having Trump send out the U.S. press, invite in the Russian press, yuck it up with the Russians, give them state secrets, and then brag about the fact that he got rid of Comey to take the heat off because he said, quote, I'm now not under investigation, which Sean Spicer didn't even dispute. So is that evidence? Of course not. But what was evidence? What's, what's evidence, what's I mean, evidence is, is when all the people is, I named... Do you believe what you're saying? Or is oh, it, are these the, the those are undisputed facts. I mean, oh, no, no. Those are undisputed facts. They gave Tucker. them state secrets? Sure, what, do you, what, do you, what do you think? This is yeah. having an actual effect on our ability to conduct a foreign policy that's what rational do you call it? and in the best interest of the United States. What okay, do you look, call classified Russia information? Russia is fighting... Is is fight look it's not the president decides what's classified now i think the president probably talks too much i've said that a lot and i still Stay think very it, generous but yeah. that's very different from giving away state secrets there's really? no evidence of that that's well, a well, crime yes well, really well, 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 but here's the point here's the point the this has an enemies. effect yeah. on our ability to conduct foreign policy that helps america I, this I, is crazy you know what's crazy it's crazy for the president of the united states to send out the u.s press Keep in the Russian press and give. You might not. Uh, you may dispute my term state secrets. I bet you anybody out there in your well, audience. Your term is wrong. Well, well, when you're when you're talking about classified information that reveals assets that are very hard to come by and that gives the Russians Which the ability secret? to. State secret is whoever that Israeli is that's buried in ISIS in the town that Trump mentioned, that is a state secret. I don't care what you call it. I bet the Israelis call it that. I guarantee you that's so exactly Trump, what they so would call Trump it. So Trump said. Okay, so he's betrayed Israel now. So Trump said there's an Israeli in this town giving us this information. How do you know that? I have not read that. Here's what we I know. I don't know that that's true. Well, I don't I, believe it's true. I don't uh, know why you would say something like that with no evidence. But maybe uh, you're part of the, this whole echo chamber that just repeats <laughs> innuendo, hoping it will become true. Look, this is bad because it's not fact-based. We don't no, know that. Well, I'll tell you what we do know. What we do know are the reports coming out that were undisputed. I'm not saying the White House has to dispute every cockamamie thing that gets reported. But this is pretty central. If they had a dispute, they would put it out there. And they're not disputing what was said. Even General McMaster did not dispute the essence of that. They talked about sources and methods. Of course he didn't go there. Okay. He said, we, we got okay. this information out of ISIS.
Can, 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 can we rise above politics for one second here? So Russia is a major player geopolitically. It's got Absolutely. massive energy reserves. It's fighting a multi-front battle against Islamic extremism. We have a lot of common interests with Russia. Why is it, and Democrats are saying this out loud, immoral for the United States to conduct foreign policy with Russia? Yeah. Why is Russia a country that's just beyond the pale? It's of like course. North Korea. You can't have a conversation with Russia even if it helps you. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. That seems to be what I, they're saying. I, I think you, Russia invaded and took over Crimea. Russia basically undermined the, the sanctity of the U.S. elections, right? And they taunt us about it. So, no, so we should deal with them? Of course, they're a big country that they need to be dealt with. But to sort of dismiss the U.S. press, keep in the Russian press, yuck it up, and then okay, get I'm classified sorry, I'm information. Trying, no, let, let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just take this step by step. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to take what you're saying seriously. I'm, I'm almost about to give up on this show. No, don't. Don't China give up. China invaded every single Tibet thing and still bad. occupies it. Does that mean that we shouldn't be having bilateral negotiations with China? This is insane, and it's purely political. And, and nobody is saying, actually, that we shouldn't have bilateral negotiations. We shouldn't be giving China classified information. Incidentally, how many million times did Trump whine about what Hillary had on her email that nobody even accessed okay. versus him handing Look, and a silver platter I'm, to the It's Russians. not my Come job on. to defend his campaign comments, but WikiLeaks, according to the WikiLeaks dump, which no one disputes, the last administration gave information to Russia, to the Putin government, or the government that preceded Putin, but still controlled by Putin, on the nuclear capabilities of Great Britain. So you know, I, I don't know. Was that treason? Was that in the same category? Trump is not being accused of anything like that at all. Oh, oh, this is I, situational. I, oh, you know, guys don't like Trump, and you're making this Russia thing into something that is. This is like insane, actually. No, it's not insane. See how irresponsible no, this is. I, I guarantee you, six months from now, whenever it is that we get the results of the Mueller investigation, or if we actually have testimony publicly from Manafort and you know his compatriots, and maybe Comey. I guarantee you, you will not say what I'm what coming up find? with is Adam. What do we what, what do you, what do you expect? What do you expect we'll find? Oh, I think we'll find that, that all the people I mentioned, Manafort, Page, you know, Carter Page, etc., did indeed discuss, and that it was not an accident that the WikiLeaks Podesta what? emails. Hold on, the Wiki, that the Podesta emails were dropped one hour after the Access Hollywood tapes. What I think we'll find is somebody close to Trump said, "Go now, you got him." Go with it, which is why Roger Stone couldn't help but brag about the fact that it was going to be Podesta's time in the stock. He just couldn't help himself. So somebody in the Trump wow. orbit said, wow. now. This is it's you, interesting. Let me ask you, Trump you gets elected, you think Trump that? gets elected, and I thought, you know, I thought Democrats are going to think, how do we lose the middle class? How do we lose the upper Midwest? They used to vote for us. They no longer do. Maybe we should think about, you know, the program we're offering. But no, we get right into Carter Page and Roger Stone and, like, we're in full, we're in full really Oliver Stone think, land. Well, well, perhaps. I think it's crazy is what I really think. Well, well you know what's I'm crazy? Richard, what's crazy, crazy is admitting all these, all these contacts. Bye-bye, Cut Tucker. Right. Thanks. Joining me now is California Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Congresswoman, uh, first out of the gate, do you respect the outcome of this election, and are you willing to work in the future with the Trump administration? Well, the election has taken place, uh, and we have to wait and see who this man is and what he's going to do. I don't believe anything that Donald Trump says. Uh, he has lied and distorted information all throughout this campaign. I want to know when is he going to show us his taxes. I want to know when is he going to reimburse all those students that got ripped off up at the Donald Trump University. I want to know when he's going to apologize to the disabled journalists about mocking him in front of the children of America. I've never seen anything like this. So are we so going to work with him? Which Donald Trump are we working with? If it's the same Donald Trump that that has shown himself throughout the campaign, then I don't want any parts of it. If President Obama gives you a kind of a full briefing, Congresswoman, about this president-elect uh, and says, you know what, you might want to give him a shot, would that be a vouch in your mind's eye? Or do you I need to see that explanation of an apology to the disabled or see how the fraud case plays out against Trump you? Are there I other things you need to see? I just left a room full of veterans uh, over at U.S. Vets that I went over to encourage and to thank them for their service. These are vets who have complaints in about their disabilities. These are vets who have complaints about hospital services. Donald Trump doesn't pay any taxes, as I'm told, or as I'm led to believe. So I don't know how I'm going to be so thrilled with, what, with working with him.
him. I want to know how is he going to make up for some of the terrible things he did and said during the election. And yes, it's important to me that he apologizes to the disabled veteran that he mocked and mimicked. Uh, that is awful. It's something I can't get out of my head. And I worry about all of those students who paid that money to go to the university. I'm, I'm worried about the contractors who did work for him, who he hasn't paid, and simply gets out of paying them by saying, I didn't like their work. It but, was shoddy work. But, but, but this shouldn't man, you be, but, uh, Congressman, no, with all no. due respect, shouldn't you be yes. worried about the fact, and the, the, the reality is that Donald Trump was able to flip regularly blue states, turn them red. These are American voters that felt they left behind really by know. the Democratic they Party. They believed him. They believed they be him. Correct. They, they believed him when he said he's going to build a wall. He's not going to build anything. He's not going to build any wall, and he knows it. And this program that he has about the first 100 days, he's going to get rid of Obamacare. He's not going to do that either. When they find out who he is and the fact that they've been lied to, they've been conned, they've mis been misled, then they won't be the same people believing in him. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, always great to have you on. Thank you for your time. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you so it. very much. Absolutely. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.